are right in his own eyes. But if we have a brand new life, we don't want to do what's right in our eyes. We want to do what's right in the eyes of God. I say today that we need to trade that old life that is in rebellion against the, the commandments of God. That life that is in rebellion against the boundaries that he has set that we might live a good life and make it to heaven. We need to trade that old life that is in rebellion to a life that will keep us in the way that God would have us to go. This little boy couldn't disobey his mom without his shoes squeaking so loud that he just had to be obedient. Well, as I remember another boy in the story, he loved the mud puddles. Now that's typical of kids, isn't it? Uh, we had old Jacob the other day, and we had that little shower rain, that little low place where they worked on the sewer a few years ago, always collects a puddle. And of course, coming over to my study with Jacob, when he noticed that puddle, I mean, he took off in a dead run directly for that puddle and had to jump right in the middle of it. Came over another day and he had on a brand new pair of tennis shoes. You know, those pretty nice tennis shoes. And I mean, he was so proud of those shoes, but there in our retaining wall, there's a, a little drain hole. And somehow or another, it had enough moisture. I guess some of the dirt had washed out of that. Had a little pile about that big. And he just had to kick that pile. I mean, you know, had to go out of his way to do it, but he just had to soil his brand new shoes. And, and you know, I can imagine this little boy, his old shoes were probably just caked with mud because he was constantly splashing in the mud. Uh, he just couldn't seem to stay away from the mud puddles. And, and you know, a lot of times the old man, that is our old life, we love the mud puddles, don't we? You know, any known sin, anything that we know is wrong is a mud puddle that will soil our heart. And the Bible, if we'll take time to read it and take time to listen to the teaching and the preaching of the Bible, it points out that which so easily soils the soul. Points out that which is like a mud puddle that keeps us from being the holy and the righteous person that we really ought to be. And, and you know the mud puddles of this life. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about mud puddles, but you know what the mud puddles are in your life. Those things that even though they may be fun to splash around in, they leave you with a bad feeling. They leave you with a feeling of guilt or a feeling of remorse or a feeling of shame. This little boy had to have felt some shame walking around with mud cake shoes. And, you know, we can just get involved in things that we know are wrong and, and uh, we see that, that we are partaker of the mud puddles of this world when God wants us to be clean and holy and pure and righteous, yet we allow ourselves to be associated with the mud puddles. And, and you know, we just can't help it, can we? Why? Because we have a sin nature. We are prone to be taker, partakers of the evil because we do have that sin nature. Even though we are told through the word to abstain from even the very appearance of evil, we find that it sometimes takes more than what we have within to resist the evil of this world. And there's such a strong bent to sin in the hearts of mankind today. And and you know, I know that a lot of times we wish that we could avoid the mud puddles, but there's just something that attracts us to the mud puddles. We wish that we could avoid the sin that makes us feel shameful and remorseful and guilty. I've done a few of those things. I know what I'm talking about this morning. I've stepped in a mud puddle or two across the years of my life, and, and I know the shame and the guilt and the remorse they come so easily from that, uh, but sometimes we're just powerless. We don't have the will to resist the mud puddles. And, and we know in our heart, maybe from remembering what we were taught in Sunday school, remembering what the preacher said one time about abstaining from sin and, and going around the mud puddles of life. And yet there's something about a sinful nature that takes us right to the mud puddle. Well, this little fellow, he brought his old mud 
cupcake shoes to this stranger, and he got a brand new pair. And every time that he came around to a mud puddle, well, his new shoe just steered him around the mud puddle. I mean, no longer was he splashing in the mud. His new shoes took him around the mud. And you know, God can help us to avoid the sins of this life. We don't have to be involved in the sin and the evil of this world. Eh? We can trade our life for a brand new life, eh? and God will help us to avoid the mud puddles. Well, I know there are quite a few little boys in that story that traded their old shoes for new shoes. One guy, the first one, I mean, tell you, every time he disobeyed, his shoes squeaked. The second one, every time he came to a mud puddle, Holy Spirit just guided him around it. And this third one, yeah, it's about the only, one, the only other one that I remember. Wish I could find that story. I'd preach this sermon again someday. <laughs> Might be altogether different. You know, we remember things differently. But, but anyway, there was one that was so prone to just wander and stray. I mean, he just couldn't seem to find his way home. He'd get distracted so easily on his way home. If I hadn't have known better, I would have thought the author was talking about me. You know, I don't have much sense of direction. I get lost so easily. I get turned around and I don't know which way is home. I can get so confused sometimes. I often say that's one thing I loved about living in Colorado Springs. I couldn't get lost. The mountains were always west. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, that's the only place I ever lived that I knew my directions. I knew that if I was going this way and the mountains were over here, I was going north. If I was going this way and the mountains were over here, I was going south. If I looked in my rearview mirror and I saw the mountains, I was going east. I knew my directions back then. But I'm not real good about finding my way. Get me in unfamiliar territory. I can get lost quite easily. Get me out in a wilderness, you know, out in the woods. Man, I tell you, I, they, they say if you're lost in the woods, you have a tendency to go in circles. And, uh, you know, you can wander around in the woods and, well, that tree looks familiar. <laughs> I think I was just here an hour ago. That's typical of people that don't have a good sense of direction. And, you know, a lot of times we're trying to find our way home, aren't we? We're Christians and we want to make it to heaven. I tell you, I never, never prepare a funeral message, but what it doesn't put a, a desire in my heart for heaven. I want to make it. I want to go there with all of my heart. I don't want anything to cause me to miss heaven. And, and I want to set my direction toward heaven. I want to be as Abraham that looked for a city that had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. And he had his eyes on that celestial city. That's how I want to live my life. But I'm kind of like that little boy. who gets so confused and so turned around. And, and a lot of people that really want to go to heaven. I mean, they have a desire to join those that have gone on before. They have a desire to be an inhabitant of that place that they've heard preached of and talked about. And, and yet we get so confused and so turned around this little boy, a lot of times, he just had a hard time finding his way home. He would get so distracted, and he would get so confused. He just didn't know which way to go. But you know, he heard this old stranger with the sack on his back, new shoes for old, new shoes for old. He took his old shoes off and exchanged them for a brand new pair. Boy, they got him started in the direction of home, and there was nothing that would distract and sidetrack him. He made a beeline for home. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll change that old broken down, soiled, sinful life for a brand new life in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to set your course toward yes. heaven. Amen. And nothing's going to deter you. Nothing is going to dampen your enthusiasm with desire and determination. You're going to head straight for home. That's what a new life will do in exchange for the old Amen. life. Uh, it'll do away with the confusion. It'll do away with the prone, 
proneness to wander and to stray. It'll set you in the course towards your eternal home. And, well, I'm here to say that a lot of times we come to the realization that our old life is like a broken down pair of shoes, so soiled and so nasty looking, so smelly. You know, we dare not try to live a life of obedience within our own strength. We can't do it. We need that new life. We need not try to, to stay away from the pollution of the world within our own power. Sin is a strong attraction to mankind, but a new life, it'll take us away and around the mud puddles. We need not try to find our way to a heavenly home with our own wisdom. God wants us to listen to this one that made the journey from heaven to earth, this stranger that came into the world with the, with the, with the news, new lives for old lives, mm -hmm. new lives for old lives. Yes. So if you're tired of the old broken down life of sin and shame today, there's a brand new life through Jesus Christ. Let's stand and bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee today for the message yes. that Thou hast given, new Lord. lives for old lives. So yes. thankful, Lord, that like the guy that came to the little village crying out, new shoes for old shoes, Lord, we can exchange that old broken down, run down, smelly life for a brand new life in Christ yes, Lord. that will take us to heaven. Use this attempted preaching this morning, Lord, to speak to every oh, heart. And God. should there be those here with needs, Lord, we pray that thou would seek after them. Yes, and yes, help Lord. them to realize that them there now. is help good them. news, they that they can have a brand change new life, life for a new that old life. Bless We're going to just wait quietly for oh, a moment here. God, please. Perhaps allow the Holy Bless Spirit Lord. to speak to Lord. hearts Someone this morning. Here, Lord, if yes, there's Lord. somebody that needs that the brand new life in Christ Jesus. Jesus. You can have it before Jesus. you leave this building deal. today. Oh, you can come and deal with this altar. We'll pray it's with you. Christ. You can meet the Christ that says new life yes. for old life. Yes, Anybody want to do that this morning? Give that old life of guilt and shame where there's so much remorse trade it for a life of freedom in Christ. God's spoken to your heart this morning. Disobey God. No. Yes. Well, there are those say, Brother Hayden, I, I realized this morning that my life isn't all that it ought to be. I'd like to have that brand new life where old things pass away and all things become new. You'll just lift your hand and say, pray for me, that I someday will find that new life. Anybody want to slip a hand and say, pray for me? God, we see that hand, and yes. we see that hand, and we see that hand. Yes. We see that hand. Yes. yes. Are there others I need to trade this old broken down yes. life for a brand new one? Yes. Lord. We're going to be praying for yeah, you. We pray, Lord. 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 If you want to pray even before you leave them. this morning, we'll be yes. glad to meet with you at the start. Oh, yes. Lord, let God, me know. Help not Your life off. can be so yes. changed Lord. today. Yes. You can have that brand new life in Christ Jesus. Lord. Heavenly yeah. Father, take this message today and continue yes. to seek after oh, those yes. that need that new life. Yes. God, Lord, you're able to do so God. much for us today. We thank you for the grace of God, yes. for the difference yes. that you make in our lives. Yes. And we pray to you, Lord, that thou will not let those that have a need today have any rest until they find a place of prayer and repentance. Yes. Will they allow the Christ of Calvary? Lord, to apply the shed blood to their heart to take away all their sin yes. and to give them a brand new life. Mm -hmm. uh, go with us. Bring us back tonight expecting your blessing. We pray in Christ's name. Oh, Amen. Amen.